When everybody hates it, we think it's okay. When everybody likes it, we gotta complain. We're quite contrary. Welcome to the only shit. <laughs> the only shit. Welcome to the only show on the internet mathematically designed to disagree with you. This is Johnny Dim. That's yeah, that's me. That's Jeremy. Hey, and this is quite contrary. We're going to talk a little bit about Star Wars. But you're probably thinking, haven't you already done Star Wars? Yeah, but there's a lot of Star Wars to do. You know what I'm saying? Recently, the trailer for Star Wars Episode Eight hit the interwebs and hit it hard. So we thought now would be a very opportune time to talk about why Star Wars Episode Seven is horrible. So here's what sucked about it. Number one, what does BB-8 do? I want you to go back and I want you to watch episode seven and i want you to tell me what is the use what is his job because i don't know i don't he's a soccer ball right he's good at that he rolls around he makes beeping noises and you know, he's cute as hell i mean he's good at that but other than that what is his function because i can't figure it out yeah you know he was supposed to be a, a like a comic relief uh, but in my opinion he's he, he's he takes a whole lot of notes from R2-D2, mm -hmm. but without C-3PO to play off of. Right. Right? Uh, sometimes there's a couple of interactions with Finn that are that are kind of cute with the little thumbs up lighter thing. Yeah, but other than that, you know, when you think of like an iconic duo, you know, from Star Wars, you know, the first two that uh, you'd always come to mind are R2-D2 and C-3PO. So without someone else to, to work with inside that dynamic, it just kind of falls flat for me. That's his role in the movie. But in the Star Wars universe, the droids all have a purpose. C3, C3PO was a, uh, what, translator, protocol droid? Protocol droid. Yeah, R2-D2, what, I, I, don't, I know he's good at, fit, good at fitting in X-Wings. I don't know what his actual job is. He's an astromech droid. So he does that. Yeah. He's a repair droid, right? He does all, uh, depending on who is directing the movie, he does all kinds of stuff. <laughs> So, so other than being a soccer ball, I mean, really all he is is basically a, what, a USB stick? Essentially. Yeah. yeah he, he carries information. That's it. Yeah. So essentially, BB-8 is just a, a USB stick with robotics and, and uh, I guess, an AI. Oh. Hey, USB stick. How's it going? You have some, you have some data for me? Yeah? All right. Let me, get, let me get one of these out here. There you go. Number two, more people who cannot remember the prequels. So, in the galaxy far, far away, people seem to have a very, very, very short memory span. Selective. Maybe selective, <laughs> selective memory, okay? You have um, an organization out there that defended, you know, the known galaxy or the known universe for a thousand generations. A thousand of them. That's a lot. A generation is 30 years still, right? Yeah. So a thousand of those, you do the math, okay? Now, when we see the episode seven, you know, we were talking about things that happened, what, 35 years beforehand? Just about. Okay. I mean, the, the destruction of a massive military installation. Yeah. You know, uh, the, the emperor, uh, uh, you know, his, his fall from power and everything. But still, the name Luke Skywalker uh, is just a legend. Yeah. It's not really a household name like it should be. Yeah. I mean, there are plenty of things that happened 35 years ago in our history that I can tell you about, mm -hmm. you know? So this leads us to the paperless galley or the paperless universe theory. Now, this is something that, that George Lucas has said in interviews before and that Star Wars is paperless. With all of the information being transferred and, and distributed, you know, digitally, it kind of makes sense that, that Palpatine could have manipulated that at some point. Right, but in that, in that same token, uh, 
when you talk about how large the galaxy is and that all that information and that data that could have been manipulated, it becomes a little far-fetched to think that Palpatine or any other ill-intentioned person can erase everything of a mention of, of all the Jedi, like all this different stuff that could have happened. Yes. It's, it's a little ridiculous to even think that because even now in the real world, we leak uh, information all the time and we're just one planet. Yeah. You would need a massive men in black yeah. eraser machine. Yeah, that would have, that's, that would have spread. A massive cylindrical device. Oh, sure. That's domed at the top. It needs to be. Right? Yeah. With a red tip. It's got a little slit in it. Right. Because that's, that's where the light comes That's out. where it projects from. Yeah, absolutely. But massive. Go ahead. With two knobs at the bottom. Yeah. All right. So let's, let's just take into account, um, you, you know, uh, passing information by word of mouth, mm -hmm. you know. We have some very, very uh, uh, credible, incredible, important characters that, that are central to the plot of everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, um, one of them just happens to be Chewbacca, yeah. who fought yeah. in all of this. Yeah. You know, he couldn't tell other people. Yeah. He's like a vampire. He lives forever. He was there. So to say that Palpatine's influence on the entire galaxy was so strong that he could... Possibly, in my mind, the only way to do this is to use the Force to cloud everyone's memory sure. of what happened. Like, that's it. And if he's powerful enough to do that, what else could he be capable of? He could have erased all Imperial defeats from memory. Um, because of Palpatine's age, he could have used the Force to clear up his erectile dysfunction issue. You think he, like, you know, makes a lightsaber noise? Like, like igniting a lightsaber? Yeah. <laughs> That's, Jeremy, that's the sound it makes when it's hitting another one. Number three. Required reading. You know what sucks, Jeremy? Is that I bought a lot of that required reading? No, I was going to say homework. Uh. Homework sucks. <laughs> um, no, I, I absolutely hate homework because school sucks. Go to school, kids. Don't listen to me. One of the really cool and enduring and things about Star Wars is that it is simple and it's easy to understand. It works like a lot of other movies of its time, like extremely user friendly. Completely, yeah. I was thinking, I'm thinking of stuff like like Indiana Jones. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff that's like it's got action. It's got it's got an easy ish plot plot to understand. The story's not too complicated. It's it, you, it's plug and play. You know, you put that stuff in front of a uh, anyone between five years old and 60, and they're going to freaking enjoy it because it's just good cinema. But that all seemed to change in the Star Wars universe um, because now they're, they're, they're requiring more research, and that's what Star Wars is making us do now. Okay, for example, C-3PO, he has a red arm. Why? They don't tell you in the movie. You have to go find out. Uh, Maz, the uh, CGI uh, extraordinaire. Oh, the she, Cheeto puppet. Yeah, she has, she has a lightsaber. How did she get it? I'm sorry. Well, a not speci just a specific lightsaber. Yeah, not yeah. just any. I mean, she has Anakin Skywalker's yeah, lightsaber. That's a big deal. And the 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 crate that it came out of was the same one that Obi Wan pulled it out of to give it to Luke. I didn't how did know he, that. How did these things happen? Yeah. What you the know? hell? W would you like to find out? I would. Then go back and read the Green Lantern number twenty-seven because you need to find out what happens in Superman thirty-one. <sighs> You have to buy other stuff to know stuff now. You know? I, I don't know what this unholy alliance between Marvel and Disney is, but no, they're, they're no. comic booking my Star Wars. It's, it's Disney. There's some, there's some black magic. There's some deals going on in, in, in smoky rooms behind the scenes between people who make books and Disney. That's what it is. It's conspiracy. They're trying to make us read more. And this is America. Right. We don't read. So the end result of all this is that there is a disconnect between the information that, that you were given and the overall comprehension of what is happening. Mm -hmm. Jeremy, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I've arrived too early. Too early for what? That is a question for another time. Time, time, time. Time. Why are you echoing?
fuck? Number four. That's not how space works, Johnny. Old Jar Jar Abrams has been taking some heat lately for the way that he depicts outer space in his movies. He gets the general details. It's black. It's full of stars. Sound can travel through it, uh, I, I guess. The effect of gravity between inhabited planets seems to elude him. In Episode 7, we see the Starkiller base destroy every Republic planet that exists. Mm -hmm. And they just all conveniently happen to be in the same solar system. Yep. With the, you know, the great expanse, the infinite expanse that space is. Yeah. It just so happens that you have all of these planets that just happen to be inhabitable in the yep. same solar system. Although unlikely, it is possible for that many habitable planets to be in the same solar system and be so close, but it's a bit hard to believe that such a small handful of planets would have control or at least influence over the entire galaxy. It just seems strange and really kind of dumb. But you know what? You know, maybe, maybe we should take a page out of JJ's book. Maybe... Science doesn't have to be that complicated. I, I don't know. Is that a fact, Johnny? Mm -hmm. Well, because I have kidney stones, and later on this week, I have to go in for a medical procedure called an ultrasound. Mm -hmm. How easy is the science there? I gotcha. Ah! Ah! <laughs> ultrasound. Done. <laughs> Before we get to number five, we're going to do a quick little thing we like to call... Johnny's World Famous Promotions. Is that Johnny's called? World Famous <laughs> Promotions. So the first group we want to give a shout out to is the Human League. Now, if you no. don't know... No. No, that, that's, an, that's an 80s band or some shit. No, we're actually going to talk about the Humane Society. And specifically the one, uh, I Acadiana Humane Society. Sorry, I had to read it. It's a weird name. But the last couple times we did this... I forgot to name the actual Humane Society. So we're going to remind you guys to adopt. Uh, don't, don't buy. Adopt your animals because they need homes too. Next is Camp Gladiator. It's a great outdoor fitness camp. Uh, it's available in Louisiana, Florida, parts of Texas. Um, just go to campgladiator.com to check it out. It's actually a great way to get in shape. And with that, number five. It, it was, was just, just a, a new hope, hope again. again. Yes, it's that old chestnut. It's the main complaint about episode seven. <laughs> yeah, it was just a new hope again. Yeah. You mean there was an antagonist and a protagonist, and then they had a conflict. Well, they also and then it resolved in the third act. Yeah, but it's a little more. It's a little more in depth than that, Jeremy. There's a Death Star again. I'll get in depth in your star. There are actually almost exact ripoffs of the original Star Wars: A New Hope in episode seven. What do you mean? Like, a young person living on a desert planet dreams of a better life, possibly fighting with a rebellious political entity? An older mentor figure sacrifices himself to confront a great evil and dies while doing so? A legendary weapon is given to a young person in hopes of inspiring them to fight a great evil. An old ship, known for its unreliability, overcomes the odds and escapes the imposing government entity. Some people swim around in garbage. You know, Star Wars fans, they deserve something new. Something, something different. Whoa, not that different. <coughs> and that's our show. Thank you very much for watching Quite Contrary. Please like, subscribe, talk to us down in the comments. We love talking with you guys. Um, and uh, always check out the Patreon, which you'll see links for. And as per usual, we'd like to end the proceedings by eating gummy snacks in silence.